Hey you guys, this is the Ramsey Custom Shop and my name is Gary and this is going to be the first video in a three or four part series where we're going to walk through the entire process of putting together this uh, four-way bending jig using the Ox Tool Co. Tom Lipton designed pivot uh, mechanism on each of the four bends. So we'll get into the details of what this is about and take you along for all the design, machining, fabrication, final assembly, and then actually using it to produce one of these induction rails. All right, before we get into the design and fabrication here, I wanted to just give a shout out to Tom Lipton of Ox Tool Co. Tom has had this metal bender with this uh, IDOD DOM tubing uh, with a bushing there that makes a really nice pivot mechanism, and I replicated that in the design of this going forward. So I have a link in the description to Tom's channel. If you don't already know Tom, uh, go check him out. I'm pretty sure everybody that watches this channel knows who he is, but just in case you're one of the two people that don't, go check Tom out. I have a customer down the street that makes these induction furnaces that are used to heat up steel billets uh, to, to red hot molten state. And these are the cooling rails that actually go inside the units that the, the round billets slide through as they make their way through. And they, they've asked me to produce as many as possibly two to 300 of these a year. And they come in a few different links and different configurations, but they all kind of have the same 90 degree uh, split at the end there. And uh, they come in a two rail or four rail configuration. And the distance between the fitting and the actual body of the rail can vary. So I need to come up with something that's adjustable. All right, so the first thing we did was go into Fusion 360 and uh, design up a couple of dies that have a 3 8 inch radius, which is the same diameter as the tube. And you can see it's a two position die where both tubes can be bent at the same time. So this is the inner die. And then you'll see also that we've got the outer die or that's the you know leverage die to, to push against it. And uh, you'll see more about that. But uh, this part of the project, we actually worked with Tom Zeltman at uh, Inspiration Metalworks. Uh, we were able to take our Fusion 360, and you can see we've got the uh, project in Fusion 360 shared out with Tom uh, so that Tom could take these and uh, turn them on a CNC lathe. And uh, you see in the video there, he's uh, making those. And he's actually got a complete build video, and I have a link in the description and a card on the screen right now up in your top right hand corner or if you're on a phone maybe in the bottom part of the screen uh, you can click and see the full uh, video that he did on making these dies for me. Alright so once we had the uh, the actual dies from Tom we were able to uh, we needed to come up with a way to hold the dies you know and, and attach them to the, uh, the main fixture and, and have some adjustability. So you see here we've got this um, this V-shaped part uh, that's that's the main you know part of the fixture. And then we also came up with uh, you know a part that has a fixed element to it um, where one of the dies will be mounted, and then a slot that will allow a carriage to hold another die and get us the adjustability. And you'll see how this is all going to come together here shortly. So. Um, and then, and then next, we just uh, you know cut these out of some half-inch plate that we had on the plasma table. All right, so here's what it all looked like uh, once we got it cut out. You can see the main V-shaped part that you know holds everything in place, and then you see our two right and left. Uh, mounts that will go on the V-shaped part that will allow the, uh, the dies to be mounted. Alright, so next we jumped on the lathe and we used some uh, one and a half inch DOM tubing with a three quarter inch internal diameter to allow those uh, inner dies that Tom made us to fit in there. So you see a little bit of lathe work here uh, where we cut them to length and just did a little chamfering uh, polishing on the outside because there's another DOM tubing piece that fits on the outside of it. Um, and then, uh, so we needed to make a total of four of these and those uh, came out pretty nice. And 
you'll see I put a pretty deep chamfer, chamfer on the top edges of them to allow a little better penetration for the weld uh, where it gets welded to the plates that we cut from the plasma cutter. All right, so next up here, you'll see that we're uh, going, to, going ahead and getting our, uh, our main pivots, the fixed ones, tacked in place um, to the plasma cut bracket. And the, the, the bracket there with the slot in it, I did mill out that slot out to uh, get that to a half inch diameter. We're gonna use some half inch bolts in there as the main uh, pins that'll go through that. You can just see I'm getting a tack on either side. You'll notice that I've got the both the plate um, and the, uh, the pivot that we turned in the lathe held down flat to the, the CertiFlat table. And that way we know that everything's perfectly square to each other. And we start using this bender, it's not gonna bend it off to one side or, or whatever. So, um, but I did just tack it at this point and got some pretty good tacks on, on either side of it because, um, you know, I, I didn't wanna have to, uh, you know, if I needed to move something or whatever later, then, then you know, we could do a full fit up with everything just tacked and then come back and weld it all solid at a later point. So getting this one out of the way and um, I'll, I'll go ahead and speed you through and let you watch the, the rest of the footage on this. All right, I had drawn up some mounts to be able to mount this uh, piece of two inch uh, black plumbing uh, to some stands to stand it up off the surface of the table to make a room to get clamps around it and, and that kind of thing. And then I made that big V block using the same dimensions, but for some reason it's about a um, 90 thousandths taller. So I had to chuck it up in the middle and take 90 thousandths off the bottom of it. And this worked out well anyway. It was allowed us to be able to remove the, uh, the draft that the plasma table leaves and have a nice fit up here for the welding. All right, so next we're gonna go ahead and just get some tacks all the way around on this uh, to hold it in place. Again, we're gonna tack everything first and then just do some test fitting and then come back at the end and uh, you know go ahead and burn it all in and weld it up good, make it good and strong. So um, here you can see just an initial mock-up now that we've got the V brackets in place and I've taken one of the rails that's already been completed that they gave me as an example. You can see the dies down in the lower section of it and just, just a, a test fit here to make sure we're good to go before we move to the next stage. All right, so up until this point, the carrier plates have just been clamped into place while we were doing some checking and fitting and um, so now um, I'm, you'll see I'm getting a tack on the bottom side of it here and then uh, just checking it with the square to make sure it's it's still you know uh, square as we can make it and then just using an adjustable wrench here to do some tweaks on it while it just has a couple of tacks and then we'll go ahead and uh, get the top side of it tacked up. Here I was just taking a look at both of the dies. They're pretty close together down at the very bottom here. And later you'll see where I run into some clearance issues as well. But uh, so far everything's, you know, fitting up pretty good. And you can get 
both sides of the dies in and out with no problems. All right, so now we're pretty happy with the way everything's uh, fitting up. So it's time to go ahead and uh, get what we've gotten done so far all uh, fully welded up. Now, um, I'm not welding every seam completely welded. I'm just doing like maybe one or two inch stitch welds in just random places. Uh, for one, you know, it just doesn't require it. Um, and two, if, if there's something wrong, you know, and we got to cut it loose, we don't have to cut miles of welds loose to be able to go back and make a change. So uh, just, just again, just getting a couple inches here and there. Um, and uh, yeah, you'll see that I'm kind of wrestling this thing around, moving it around to get at the different uh, round areas and um, the bottom sides and so forth. J again, just putting those, uh, those welds there. All right, guys, well, that is it for this uh, first part. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, on the next video, we're going to be making the adjustable carriage and uh, a lot of machining, um, a lot of uh, gazentas and, you know, uh, strategery and things like that. So you don't want to miss that one. Um, if you're just tuning into this one, uh, check the center of the screen for a playlist that has all the videos uh, in this series in it and you can watch all the rest of them. Thanks guys. See you.